Welcome. My name is Tracy Cook, and this is a podcast series, Victim to Victory. We have Susan Patterson as a special guest. I've been so looking forward to this interview because she's not only a best selling author, she is a content creator, she is a transition coach. But this is the kicker. I absolutely love this. She is a purpose, people, planet, lifestyle guide and blogger. You're going to want to find out what that includes and why she's doing what she does. She is a thought leader. She's an inspiration. She's an empowerer. And she is changing the world, saving lives, helping be the positive influence in the world to create that ripple effect of hope. Welcome, Susan, to Victim to Victory. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks for having me here. Absolute pleasure. Now, this series gives a voice to those that have overcome obstacles in all forms, that dare greatly to share their real stories, amazing humans like our guest today that have seen hope, risen above those adversities, and now become victorious not only victorious, they become the visionaries of tomorrow, leading the way in hope, inspiration and positivity. So please subscribe and check out the Brand Your Story Academy podcast creator course and download our latest ebook in the show notes. Susan, I'm so intrigued because you're a trainer, you're a teacher, you've, you've studied with Toastmasters, but your story is just so impactful. Where does your story start? My story starts when I was um, in my first marriage. I was I married very young, and I thought my life was planned out. I knew how everything was going to turn out. I married a minister. We were in a church, and I just knew how things were going to happen. Well. No, (laughs) things did not turn out the way I thought. And um, I found out that my minister husband had a relationship with an underage girl in our previous congregation. And there was a cover up. And uh, he and his pastor friends arranged for us to move to a different state and um, I think at that point I could have easily forgiven and forgotten and moved on but the fact that they covered it up and hid it from me from me the wife for all that time and moved 2,000 miles away from my entire support system. And then I was told I was not to speak of it. I was not allowed to process process emotions, to get angry, to, um, you know, stomp my feet and throw a plate across the room kind of thing. So I just kept my mouth shut and I moved on. And then one day I realized I couldn't do it anymore. I just, I was living a lie and that was that. So that was the end of that. Susan, I mean, that's, um, you know, just a a horrible place to be, especially as a woman or just a human in general, you know, to be told basically sit down, shut up, get on with it. Uh, You don't have a voice. You're not worthy to have a voice. Um, you you take second place, you know, um, the feelings around that, um, that you couldn't take that anymore and you lived with that, you know, for, for so long. Um, talk us through your next transition from there when you finally couldn't do that anymore. Well, you know, the I felt like I had been betrayed but there was something bigger going on. Um, The leader, a leader of a community like that should, they're supposed to have standards. I just couldn't see listening to sermon after sermon 
of him telling people to live a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way. And I knew what was really going on. And I just, I don't know, something snapped. I couldn't take it. It was not what I signed on for, to say the least. And to be told that I didn't have a voice, like you said, I just, I blamed myself for many years for quitting. On the other hand, I don't think one should stay in a situation like that. It's wrong. It would have been wrong for me to stay. It's kind of so hyper, um, hypocritical to stand up and preach something that you're not practicing, right? <laughs> Insanely hi hypocritical. And um, there was a lot of stuff for me to process, a lot of stuff that I suddenly found myself wondering, what in the hell do I believe in now? What do I believe? What do I believe about marriage? What do I believe about home? I thought that I had it figured all out, but I didn't. Your whole and belief system's been, been shattered. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I had been kicked in the gut. The rug pulled out from under me, all of that nonsense. Mm. On the other hand, in retrospect, over the years, I look back and I go, God was telling me, the universe was telling me, you don't have it all figured out, girlfriend. <laughs> you, you need to open your eyes and open your mind and open your heart and look around you and see the world as it really is, not as somebody tells you it is. And it's time to stand up and speak out. And so I did. And the there was some backlash. <laughs> and then part two happened. The um, My second marriage, he turned out to be a child molester. And my children and I went through the whole police thing and the child protective services thing. And the uh, courtroom the whole nine yards my poor kids and um, I had no idea no no idea again I was blind signed blind sighted never thought that would happen to me I thought I had my whole life figured out again and you know when you keep being taught the same lesson you have to stop and think what is it i'm supposed to be learning here and it's you don't have it figured out people have to figure out things as they go along nobody's got the copyright on the way it should be done mm -hmm. everybody's right. different not everybody fits in the same box I mean, and that's, so, um, that, that's a lot to take in for a lot of people as well. And it's quite triggering to hear that kind of thing for a lot of people as well. And especially, you know, um, something that life altering um, that impacts your whole core family unit. Um, I could only imagine, you know, coming out of one marriage, going into another and this, this horrible, horrible circumstances around that kind of situation, um, you know, rebuilding your belief system once again and and learning those lessons once again and the healing and the transformation that comes from that. Um, I could only imagine, you know, uh, what you and, and your family have been through. Well, it took me a lot of years, a very long time to work through and to figure out what the heck I was doing with my life because I felt very lost for a time and very um, just, I couldn't figure out what to believe in, who to trust, how to proceed. 
And so my goal in life has become, my whole purpose is to share what I, I have a three-step plan that I share with other women who've been through the victimization situation. And um, I try and help them to make a structure around their life so that they don't fall into the same traps I did, the traps of getting so depressed and so feeling so alone. And uh, you don't have to be alone. Reach out. There's people there to help you. Um, always ask for help. Don't isolate yourself. And when you've been victimized, you tend to isolate yourself because you blame yourself. Mm. And um, that is, I work very hard to try and share the idea that victims are not at fault. You didn't make, you're not stupid. You don't, you didn't do anything wrong. That's just what happens sometimes. And there's a way out and you can build a brand new life. And I love how, although, you know, um, no doubt there's days where, you know, you, you potentially go back to those emotions that you've transformed and evolved, um, especially as a transition coach to helping change and save lives um, because you've almost, to coin the word, embraced your story. You've got the lesson and the message from that story as hard as it is and being able to serve communities and people in the, in the positions that you've been through that are going through that at the moment and to be able to put a helping hand out and say, hey, you know, you don't have to be alone. I, I can help you. And just the support, the heartfelt support, Susan, that you're you're offering people that have been where you've been, which is a, a parent's worst nightmare, to be able to say, hey, I, I've got you. I'm here for you. I've got the tools, the resources, the commitment to show up for you, to stand behind you and give you everything that I've got and the wisdom from your lived experience. And emotionally, you know, I think, is that kind of part of your healing as well, to be able to serve Absolutely. people on the level you do? Absolutely. I was just thinking as you were saying um, that, you know, I help people. What I find amazing is that when I help these ladies who've been through the ringer, they are giving me purpose. They fulfill my life and just, uh, my life just is overflowing with joy because of them and to see them see the light and to realize that they're wonderful and they're great and they can do anything they want. They can achieve the most amazing things with their life. Because we just want to be seen. We want to be heard. We That's want right. someone to support us. And what a great place to be in as well is to go through that lived experience like you have and then get such joy out of seeing people transition and evolve and empower them on such a level that nobody probably ever has before, right? I think you're, I think you are right. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to be. Well, as so many, so many women that I run into just it's like they've never been heard. They Nobody has ever said, you have a voice, use it. Raise your voice, stand up and shout it out. And once you give them permission, they just, they just bust out and sing, you know? It's, it's really awesome. 
what a beautiful be part place of that to be. is is my um I don't know, I guess it's my reason for getting up in the morning. <laughs> my heart is full Susan my heart is full because you just come from just such a a beautiful organic authentic place to be able to serve people like this and um, you are one of our contributing authors in the upcoming victim to victory book as well where you you share your story also plus you're also a a best-selling author and um, with your transition coaching um you know, you've just evolved into just such a, a powerhouse house to give space to people to, you know, use their voice loud and strong. And like you said, I love it when you said it come out of the gate and they're just, you can't stop them now. You know, you say, That's I'm right. giving you permission to use your voice. And then That's they're right. just, they're singing it from the rooftops. Right. And yeah. what a powerful um, transformational place to be in to be able to have the skills and the resources around that as well. So where are you now with your family and um, where are you all um, kind of connected now? Well, my uh, girls, uh, they live in another state, but um, I spend the winters with them because I live in New Hampshire, which is way up by Canada. And so we have big winters here. So it's very convenient for me to spend the winters with my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. They live in the South. So um, it's nice and warm. And, and we're close are, to the beach. How are they on their healing journey as well? Uh, with, with the kind of victimization they suffered. You know, it never completely goes away. Mm. But through counseling with the right counselor, with a lot of love and understanding, and allowing them to be able to talk about it freely and say, I'm just mad today, mom. I say, okay, you know, that's all right. You're allowed. Can you tell me why? They are able to build a new life. It's not the same. They'll never be the same. Things changed once that happened. But you don't have to, your life doesn't have to be over at that point. You can still learn to love and trust and cherish and have relationships, you know, grown up relationships of their own. That's fantastic. So they're doing well. I'm so I'm so happy to hear that as well because if we totally withdraw, if we totally let it affect us, and I can totally understand how it does. I've been there myself. Um, they win. The perpetrator wins. We don't want them to win. They don't have right. the, the God given right. right to affect the rest of my life that's right may have impacted one point but I'm not giving you the power to affect the rest of my life that's right. right that's right mm. Mm. Susan you are so appreciated what kind of message would you like to leave the audience on today I would like to share with everybody that um, no matter how dark the days may seem no matter how sad you feel and how hopeless, it's not over. There is hope. There's light at the end. And you can overcome. You're strong. You're, good. You're a good person. And you can beat whatever it is you're trying to face. Powerful. Please connect with Susan, everybody. Call her for a chat. She will help you out, connect with her because she is the thought leader of tomorrow. She is a heartfelt leader and purpose, people, planet, lifestyle guide and blogger. I love it because (laughs) you are very brave to share your story. I know how hard it is to tell your story as well and to reignite those emotions every time you do tell it. 
So I really appreciate that. And you are worthy. And thank you for finding your voice so, so many others can find theirs. And we'll be sharing where to connect with you. You can find the Victim to Victory podcast on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. If you got value from today, and I know that you did, remember to subscribe and check out the Brand Your Story Academy podcast creator course and wear your story like a superhero cape and not an anchor because change starts with your story. Susan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome and see you on the next episode. 